All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as you can see up on the top of the screen once again, I'm going over the Bootstrap 4 examples at the end of the Quackit.com Bootstrap 4 tutorial. In the first lesson, I went through the first seven you know, different categories. In other words, I went over containers, grids, typography, tables, forms, responsive or custom forms, I should say, and buttons. Now we're going to pick it up with images. Let's look first at a responsive image. Now, my guess is that this one is not going to work. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am because I don't think we have the image. But let's check anyway. And we don't. All right, so let's change that to what they, from what they have there, which is this. So we'll change this from ours and we'll say images slash nature 3.jpg. And let's see if we now have something in our picture. There you go. And as we come through here, you'll notice how it stays responsive at any size. The magic that makes that happen is the fact that what we're doing in here is we're saying class equals image fluid. Notice if I take that out. All right, so that's all I've done here is I've taken out that. Still looks the same here, but notice what notice it's not it hasn't expanded. It's just got its default size, and it's not at all responsive. Go back and add it in. You can immediately see how it becomes responsive. All right. Again, my goal here is not to go ever over each of these examples, but to give you enough stuff so that it'll make some sense to you. All right, image shapes. Let's, no idea if this will work or not, but we're going to try it. All right, we've got our three, well, I guess four, four of them there. And let's change all these. So this will become images slash nature1.jpg images slash nature2.jpg images slash nature3.jpg and let's try one of our graduate examples I guess how about the uh, images slash grads2 and remember that one was a ping file. All right, so let's try that and see what we get. And notice, it doesn't like that one, but notice we've got rounded, squared, a round image, and it still isn't like this. I don't know what's wrong with that. Let's just go back to grades three, which was a JPEG file. It has nothing to do with the fact that that's a ping instead of a JPEG, to my to my knowledge. All right. Still isn't like this. What is going on here? Grades three. Huh. Well, let's just go back to the and reproduce one of the nature ones. Nature two, not JPEG. See if that fixes it. Okay. So you get dramatically different effects. In fact, I want to do this. Maybe this is a dumb idea, but we'll see. Um, let's try three, I think. 
think that's the one I want. It's not the one I wanted, but let's let's change that to one. And I don't know if it's not one, it's number two. There you go. You notice there's a big dramatic effect between the way this looks and the way this looks. Okay, are they responsive? You notice that sooner or later, it's as responsive as it can be here, and it goes down to one column. Do we have an image responsive in here? Class equal rounded. I think that was what we had before was image responsive I think let's double check from the previous example that was here image fluid See if that changes the way anything looks here. Okay, there you go. Gets out to a certain point, two columns, goes down to one, but it's responsive, stays responsive, even down to a very small size. All right. That's enough with images. Let's look at drop-downs. Here's a basic drop-down example. There you go. The next one, they have a drop-up instead of drop-down. Again, that will all be predicated by where you are on the page when you're doing this, so I'm not going to go through that. You can align items to the right. Can look at a menu header example. Not going to be very uh, much really to look at. It'll look very similar to what we did before. But now that's a header and that's a header. Okay. Button groups, again, as mentioned, you can have a horizontal or a vertical. And you can play with the size. Let's just do the horizontal and let's do the vertical. So there's the horizontal. They are looked at as one unit. There is no padding by default, although you can go in and add some, I believe, with CSS. So we look at this one. And the main difference, whoops, the main difference between these two is that when we look in here, we've got button group vertical. Whereas the last time it was button group horizontal. We'll double check that in a minute. There it's vertical. If I come back here and just change that from vertical to horizontal. Let's double check and make sure that we get what we had originally here. And you can see we do. Okay. Input groups. Let's just look at the basic input group example. a dollar sign over there but it really and truly does not matter all right so we've looked at here images drop downs button groups and input groups collapsible content I'm gonna go through all three of these
this is where we had a link you click and you see that it collapsed or uncollapsed however you want to call it collapsed or uncollapsed you know based on you clicking the link the magic again that made that happen was data class equal collapse all right and then inside we had a div with a class of collapse this was the collapsible content this was the button or the paragraph or whatever it was that we used okay this one again used a button instead we can we can show that one the first one was a hyperlink the second one is basically the same but instead of an anchor that we have here we now have a button okay so that button there but it works the same way right let me close these Finally, let's look at the accordion example that's here. Again, this is the kind of content that you would typically use for something like an FAQ page. Let's look at navs, and then we'll jump up to nav bars, I believe it is. Is it? Yep. So we'll do those, and then that will end this second round. All right. You, again, you can, you can use navs, and you can base them off of either a UL or a nav element. So let's look at both. So that's an unordered list, so you know they're not. Okay. Um, and the magic, you see class equal nav, and each individual one has a nav item. We also have one that's the active class, which is our first one. So you probably, you may not have noticed. Okay, nothing magical is happening on any of these. They're not linked to anything. We look at the based on the nav element. So what changed here? Class is nav, nav active, these are all links. Does it look any different? Doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Jumping up and taking a look at the actual nav bar, which is probably, probably what you're going to use more often. The basic nav bar. Again, what's so nice about this, this is all free code. All right. So it's not like you have to spend your time writing a lot of code. There it is. This can be replaced with an image. In the later examples, they show how you can move these three links over to the right. Let's show the fixed nav bar. So when you fix it at the top, what we have there for the nav bar We've got these bubbles. These, this isn't going to work, so we're going to have to change that. Let's use what we had before, which was our images slash uh, nature1. Now let's use nature2.jpg. Okay, but what's going to change in here? 
nav bar, nav bar fixed top. Okay. So you'll notice there's our nav bar. This is just tiling, so don't worry about that. But notice how the nav bar is not moving. It is literally fixed on the top. All right, if we look at the next example, and the main difference in this example is instead of saying, fixed top, we're saying fixed bottom. Let's use a different one here. So we'll go to images slash nature3.jpg. Well, it's not moving. I don't know what goofed up here. Oops, that's what goofed up there. So something's hoist, but the point is you see that that's not moving. Okay, let's go back. I want to make that work. Okay, so that's what they had. Images slash, we'll do one of the grad ones. How about uh, grads3.jpg? Not a, yeah, it was a JPEG. Well, something is host, and I don't know what it is. Well, it pings. But the bottom line is you still saw how when we did this, of course I've removed it now, I guess it's over here. That even as we moved up and down here, this stayed fixed to the bottom. Okay, I think that's about enough for this particular <clears throat> set of examples. So when we come back, I'll pick it up again. Uh, let's do responsive nav bar. Okay. Rather leave on a better note. their example look like just the same as mine right there but I think the key might be in when we try to change the size here see how that gets added there we go all right again I think that's about seven so we'll come back and we'll pick it up with breadcrumbs in just a couple minutes.